Last speaker of the session, Michael Kim. Oh, this doesn't matter. I don't. Talk. As I mentioned, all right, good. I guess I'm preventing you from going to lunch, so I'll try to be efficient. So, uh, great. I wanted to tell you a little bit about some of the work I've been doing over the past few years, trying to understand this idea of fairness in algorithms and in learning systems. So, so um, these days, algorithms are everywhere we look. I don't need to tell you that, but more and more, um, algorithms aren't just computers for us. They aren't just uh, calculators they're really implicated in making consequential decisions about people. So, you know, for instance, they're used in medical risk prediction, they're driving cars, they're running targeted advertising campaigns. Um, and I think I like all of these examples in that in each of these contexts, historically, the human decision makers that might be involved in uh, making medical risk prediction or driving cars uh, have been highly regulated. If you want to be a doctor or drive a car, you got to get a license in this country. Um, advertising is highly regulated by federal law, protects against discrimination uh, on the basis of race and gender. So as we move towards uh, systems where algorithms are replacing human decision makers, it becomes increasingly important to be able to understand how we're supposed to regulate these things and what it even means for a, an algorithmic decision maker to be fair or unfair. So perhaps you've seen examples like this, but we'll go through it. Where, um, so last year, Twitter users discovered that if you upload uh, the pictures on the right here uh, to Twitter, then, uh, in fact, it, the, the cropping algorithm decides to show you two pictures of Mitch McConnell and omits the fact that Barack Obama is in either of the pictures. And so users uh, tested this out across a, a bunch of different images and really found that consistently the cropping algorithm was putting forth white faces over black faces um, and indicted Twitter for uh, bias in this algorithm. And so to their credit, Twitter has taken some steps to try to address the issue and has started a, a, a cool new algorithmic bias bounty challenge where uh, they're gonna be auditing these algorithms. Um, but uh, the, the thing about this is that uh, the, the approach to fairness here is very reactive. The only thing that uh, we'll able, be able to sort of address in a bounty program like this are unfairnesses or biases that are already out there. And really, it would have been great if we could have anticipated these types of biases up front and done something about it. So that's sort of the approach that we want to take, is a more foundational approach, where we're going to try to observe and anticipate patterns of algorithmic bias and really formalize these patterns into definitions in the language of theoretical computer science, math, and statistics. And really, uh, the goal is to balance the need for general purpose solutions and uh, understanding the context in which these algorithms are going to be deployed. And the hope is that the definitions that we come up with uh, really will help us to clarify what we can and cannot expect from machine learned predictors. And sort of the eventual goal, the hope, 
is that we can develop efficient machine learning solutions that come with a provable certificate of certain fairness properties, much in the way that your modern browser provides you with a certificate of security based on cryptography. Good, so to give a, sort of a flavor of the types of definitions that we're working with, uh, the main thing that I've been thinking about for the past few years is called multi-calibration. And so multi-calibration is a condition on predictions that says that predictors should be calibrated, um, not just overall, but even when you restrict yourself, restrict your attention to subpopulations, um, where these subpopulations are defined by a computational class. So we formalize the protections and the strength of the guarantee through uh, the lens of complexity theory and thinking about uh, sort of interpolating between uh, group notions and sort of the information theoretic ideal. So indeed, multi-calibration strengthens the protections of group fairness. And we show how to uh, actually learn these things. We reduce the problem of learning multi-calibrated predictors to more standard machine learning tasks. Good, so I'll actually, I, I wanna talk in a bit more detail about some newer work, some recent work that we're trying to generalize multi-calibration and extend it a bit further. And so this work is with Dwork, Rheingold, Rothblum, and Yona. And uh, we're calling it outcome indistinguishability, where we're putting forth uh, a new goal for learning. And the, the, the perspective is that perhaps uh, rather than working in the pack model, we want to learn a probabilistic model that in some sense is indistinguishable from the ideal outcome model or the true outcome model, which we'll call nature. So I think it's best illustrated by this cartoon where we can think of it as a game of sorts, where uh, I will give you a labeled sample. So an individual X and an outcome Y, and the, the outcome will either be drawn from nature, from the true model, or from uh, the model that I'm developing, the computer program that I'm developing. And I'm gonna send this across and not tell you which one I sent to you. And then the distinguisher's task will be to guess whether the, whether the sample, whether the outcome came from nature or our model of nature. And the goal will be to develop a model for which the distinguisher can't win this game better than random guessing. So a bit more formally, we, we think of nature as a uh, joint distribution over individual outcome pairs, as is standard in supervised learning. And the observation is that for our model distribution, for any predictor that we have, a real valued predictor that's predicting a probability, we can think of that as actually giving us a generative model. So specifically, we'll sample an individual still from the marginal distribution on nature, but then we'll resample their outcome, y, y tilde, according to the predicted value, according to the Bernoulli distribution with p tilde of x. And so then the condition is uh, an indistinguishability condition between x, y star and x, y tilde. Good. So whenever we talk about indistinguishability, then you have to ask, indistinguishable to whom? And if we allowed ourselves all powerful statistical distinguishers, then it's not hard to see that we, it would require us to learn nature exactly, which is impossible from a small sample. And so what we focus on instead is a computational relaxation, where we fix a class of efficient distinguisher algorithms, A, and then we say that a model is A outcome indistinguishable, if this model distribution that we were talking about is indistinguishable from the true distribution according to all of the tests defined by those distinguisher algorithms. Good, and so how does this connect to before? Um, it turns out our main result here is that outcome, indistinguishable, outcome indistinguishability actually captures multi-calibration in a very strong way. There, there's tight connections, we can go back and forth between the two, but actually this framework is even more general. And so it really sets up uh, a cool idea that perhaps we can uh, think of fairness properties as some sort of indistinguishability conditions. So uh, an idea that we're working on formalizing is that perhaps a fair predictor should be thought of as indistinguishable from a certain ideal predictor. Good. 
So finally, I, I just want to conclude that, that these ideas of outcome indistinguishability and multi-calibration have seen applications beyond fairness. Um, so we have a number of works thinking about them in terms of learning to rank and robust estimation. And a number of other people have uh, done some cool work related to outlier detection and agnostic learnability. I think uh, really the main contribution of the OI framework so far is setting up the framework and hopefully uh, you can apply it to your favorite learning problem too. Uh, thanks so much, happy to take questions. Okay, so does the distinguisher know the star and if so, how does it have access to it? Right, so, so that's a great question. The, the, in our model, the distinguishers have access to D star through samples, but don't say no, the exact formulation of D star. Thanks. Does your theorem have any implication for GANs? Because, uh, oh, yeah, that's a great question. So, so, uh, we didn't think about it in terms of GANs, but uh, it's very natural to think about. The, the distinguisher game is quite similar to the discriminator game that people like to think of in GANs. Uh, we're thinking about a supervised learning setting, whereas GANs typically think about uh, unsupervised, but it, it's very related. Let's thank all the speakers. Remind you that there is a reception this evening.